The rate of an SN2 reaction is affected by the sterics or the crowding of the carbon that is being attacked in the mechanism. So remember, sterics just refers to crowding or how much stuff might be attached to that carbon that we're trying to attack. Let's also, as a refresher, remember the SN2 stands for substitution because we are replacing one functional group for another. It's nucleophilic because the thing that is initiating the reaction is a nucleophile, has a negative charge on it. And then the two stands for second order kinetics, but we're going to remember that as two molecules collide in the mechanism. So let's draw an SN2 mechanism. And we're going to use Uh, reaction, the same reaction that was in the previous video, where we have a hydroxide ion attacking a carbon that has a methyl group, an ethyl group, and then there is our leaving group. The oxygen, remember, attacks the carbon from the opposite side of the bromine so that the negatively charged bromide can occupy this area of space and the negatively charged hydroxide can occupy that area of space and those two negatively charged substances do not have to be in the same general area. And in the last video, I talked about how this, we call it a backside attack, causes the stereochemistry of this particular carbon to be inverted completely. So another thing that we take into consideration because of the nature of the, um, of the mechanism of this reaction is the sterics or the crowding at the carbon where all the business is taking place. This carbon right here needs to be accessible to the nucleophile because the nucleophile is attacking the carbon while it still has four bonds in place, it's kind of a tight fit to get that nucleophile to come in. Remember this bromine does not start breaking away early from the molecule. Nothing happens uh, until the hydroxide comes in and hits this carbon, which causes the bromine to fall off. So again, this carbon in the center of the molecule needs to be accessible to the incoming nucleophile. The more accessible that carbon is, the faster the reaction will work. So for example, if we have a carbon that has, I'm gonna use LG for leaving group, and then it just has a bunch of hydrogen attached to it, and hydrogen being the smallest atom and the smallest substituent that we could have, this carbon atom is going to be the most accessible to an incoming nucleophile because it only has teeny tiny things attached to it. So this particular type of electrophile or substrate is gonna react very, very fast because it is not crowded. Very fast to react by an SN2 because there is no crowding at that center carbon. And then as you can imagine, we're gonna draw this like um, greater than, less than signs. As we start to add stuff to that central carbon, the reaction is going to start slowing down. So let's say that we put one thing on the central carbon. I'm gonna use the letter R to indicate some sort of substituent, like maybe it's a methyl group on that central carbon. It still has two hydrogen, which are small, so it is still pretty accessible. And this particular, this would be a primary carbon, this is pretty fast to react due to minimal crowding. And I'm sure you can kind of see that there's gonna be a trend here. So if we have two things, two non-hydrogens attached to the central carbons, now we've got, maybe we have a methyl group up here and an ethyl group down here and then our leaving group, the bromide. 
Now things are starting to get a little bit crowded and it is a little bit harder to react to get that nucleophile to come in. And if we get to a point where we have no hydrogen at all anymore on that central carbon, in this case, the carbon is so sterically hindered, it's so crowded that the nucleophile basically can't access the carbon. It is not, I don't want to say that this reaction does not work because it is possible for this reaction to, to proceed, but it's so slow that it's just not practical. And we often say that it just doesn't react. So textbooks will typically say that a carbon that has no hydrogens on it at all is not going to react at all by SN2. And that's a bit of a lie because they will react eventually. It's just so extremely slow that it's not useful for us at all. The, the slowest would be the carbon that has only one hydrogen on it at all. So this would be the slowest reasonable SN2 reaction. So to summarize, all of these types of substrates or electrophiles are capable of doing SN2 in a reasonable way. And they have a relative rate of reaction decreasing as you add more substituents to them. If you have no hydrogens at all on that central carbon, we're, we're going to say that that reaction just does not even proceed because it moves so slowly.